Hello there my very good friends on today's wrestling news video, CM Punk playing backstage politics in AEW and screwing another wrestler out of the world title. After that one we'll talk about the WWE fan favourite set for a monster push. From there we'll talk about WWE's hot pursuit of top AEW stars and then we have all the spoilers from the Ring of Honor television tapings yesterday. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff happened there but not everyone wants to be spoiled so there's the spoiler warning I'll give it again just before the story and we'll take it from there anyway I'm Andy Murray this is the eel you're supposed to say something there you little green prick and this is the news I hate that guy sincerely hate that guy anyway let's kick this thing off by talking about CM Punk um this is strange okay this comes from Ryan Frederick who works for the Wrestling Observer slash figure four online but it's from a discord chat this is a bit interesting you'll understand the tone i'm speaking with here but i'll just read this message which comes from a screenshot from a discord that was posted on reddit by a guy who writes for the observer or whatever whatever um here here's the quote uh hangman page was never going to beat cm punk at double or nothing until the workers rights promo punk got it changed and tony literally sat on the porch of punk's house in los angeles booking out the summer with hangman not anywhere close to being in the mix because punk was not going to work with him. No way they were going back to him at any point. So, double or nothing, CM Punk wins the world championship. What's being alleged here is that Hangman was originally set to go over Punk until that workers rights promo that if you remember set this whole controversy off in the first place. CM Punk went, no, I don't like this guy, politicked him out of it with Tony Khan and then planned a whole summer of programming not featuring Hangman because he was upset with him. That's what's being alleged here, right? Now, couple of caveats. It's a Discord screenshot from goodness knows who took this and posted it on Reddit. Um, usernames are what they are, but Ryan Frederick has previously reported that after Brawl Out, where the Elite and CM Punk had their fight thing backstage, the, the uh, Young Bucks, apparently, according to him at the time, had put feelers out to WWE to gauge interest. Interestingly, Dave Meltzer, who also works for the Wrestling Observer, he is the Wrestling Observer, what am I talking about, uh, dispelled this. He said, no, that rumor is not true. So it's a dubious source here. However, I figured that you guys would want to know about this and would want to talk about it and want to speculate on it and have some fun with it. So that's what we're doing here. Um, Dave Meltzer, it should be noted, did not talk about this at all on today's Wrestling Observer Radio, which came out about half an hour ago, so a good few hours after this claim. But yeah, there you go, it's a claim of CM Punk being a bloody backstage politician in AEW, which I'm sure will be sweet nectar to people who don't like CM Punk. Uh, and I'm sure those who do enjoy CM Punk will be like, well, hold on a minute, this is a bit interesting, um, source-wise. Uh, I'm not offering any opinion on this whatsoever, other than pointing out what I think uh, about how how this is, you know, come to life. Um, CM Punk still out of action in AEW. He was injured, of course, wrestling John Moxley, but he had the indefinite suspension for fighting with the Elite. Uh, he's done a lot of wrong. The Elite have done a bit of wrong. Who's more wrong? I mean, if Punk had did this, that that's pretty bad. But it's, you know, I'm not backstage in the company. What do I care? Let's move over to WWE with some better news, um, fortunately. This is a report from the Give Me Sport Wrestle Votes collaboration. They come through with the scoops every now and then, noting that Gunther is set for a big push in WWE. Triple H loves the guy and he's about to be next in line potentially to head into the main event scene. Here's a quote from Wrestle Votes. Uh, Triple H loves him. They all love him since he came into his own at Clash at the Castle. Uh, I'm not just talking about Triple H. Road Dogg is big on him and Jason Jordan really likes him as well. Road Dogg is, I don't know, some kind of higher up. And Jason Jordan is a lead producer in WWE, of course. And Clash at the Castle was Gunther vs. Sheamus, which was widely regarded by a lot of people as one of the best WWE matches of the year. I think it was the best WWE match of the year for me. It was great. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, continuing, WrestleVotes noted that once WWE gets two world titles, you double the amount of people in the main event. Gunther is ready to step up. I I expect by the summer to see him at the top of the card. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins a world title. He might be next in line. So Gunther has been Intercontinental Champion since last June. He beat Ricochet. He's since beaten a bunch of big names. Sheamus, Braun, uh, Rey Mysterio, bunch of great wrestlers across the board. 
longest reigning intercontinental champion of the 21st century, which is some achievement. Um, he's the first wrestler in a long time who's made those calls of, ah, yeah, it's the workers' title. We've been talking about that for decades and decades. Gunther has done that more than anyone over this period. So to, to bring it back to where it used to be. So, hey, I think the guy's awesome. I would love to see him in the main event scene. And I'd love to see him with a world title around his waist, whether or not that's the undisputed belt or they split it up and give him one and Cody has another, whatever, whatever. We've also got to see him and Cody after the Rumble too, don't we? So lots of interesting things. And it's nice to see the WWE recognizing that this guy's awesome and he should get a nice big push. Uh, let's move over. No, let's not move over anywhere. We're sticking with WWE, aren't we, Eel? He still doesn't talk. He's a toy eel. Of course he doesn't talk. WWE's going hard. They're going hard to sign top AEW stars. This is according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio. He noted that AEW founder and president Tony Khan's about to have himself a very interesting year because a number of key AEW contracts are set to expire in 2023 and WWE is expected to go after everyone who's good. That was Meltzer's words. Everyone who's good. Interesting one. Uh, but it's not a one-way street here. Um, a number of big WWE contracts are also up as well. So they're going to have a few potential free agents hitting the market unless they can agree renewals. Um, Tony Khan might now look to improve his product's perception, making it more attractive to prospective signings, with Meltzer citing AEW's financial stability and an easier schedule as potential selling points. Um, currently, however, it's noted that people in WWE don't really have that perception of AEW. Um, and that's pretty much the end of the report. So from my perspective, I wouldn't be surprised if people in WWE did not have that perception of AEW seeing it as a potentially attractive place to go to because WWE is really good at the moment. Triple H treats people a lot better than his demented father-in-law did. People are getting pushed, people are doing well on TV, the products pretty decent across the board, some great stuff, bloodline, judgment day, all that stuff, great. Uh, maybe AEW, a little bit more chaotic, some people might feel. Um, that's just my perspective kind of judging how wrestlers might see the situation. Might be totally off base, who the heck knows. Um, Kenny Omega, of course, his contract was due to expire recently, but that's had time added on due to injury. Uh, the Young Bucks, I believe, are up by the end of the year. FTR, Dax, Harwood has said their deals are up in April. So it's gonna be very interesting to follow and we will see where this goes. But obviously, it's a wrestler's market now. They have two big places to work in the US. Um, if, if contract season comes up, Anyone who just isn't like wholly set on one place would be a bit silly to not go over to the other party, regardless of who they work for and go, hey, they're gonna give me this. What can you give me this? Settle on the best deal for them. Full support of this. It's better when people have options and it's better now that we have two extremely viable options near the top of the wrestling scene. Um, Spoilers now from the Ring of Honor television tapings. Obviously, a lot of people will not want to hear these uh, because the shows air, well, they start airing next Thursday. We're going to have ups and downs on those, by the way. Simon Miller checking in. Um, but some pretty interesting things happened here. So if you don't want to hear these, just skip ahead a little bit. You know the drill. Over to the Twitter questions, which we'll get to. You ready for some spoilers? However, if you're still here, I assume you are. Zack Sabre Jr. showed up, returning to the Tony Khan umbrella of promotions for the first time since Forbidden Door. Uh, he defended his World Television Championship, the New Japan Television Championship, against Blake Christian. Uh, and these tapings were, of course, at Universal Studios in Orlando. They were yesterday. Um, elsewhere, Ring of Honor World Champion, Claudio Castagnoli, successful defense against AR Fox. Later, he was challenged by Eddie Kingston. They have a long-running backstage real also on screen rivalry. So that's interesting. Eddie challenged him for a title fight. Uh, Claudio said a man with without honor will never be Ring of Honor World Champion. Trying to push him away there. Um, Athena defended her Women's Championship, Ring of Honor Women's Championship against Willow Nightingale. Uh, previously, Willow had beaten former Impact star Lady Frost, making her debut uh, and then challenged Athena. Mark Briscoe was involved. Uh, Samoa Joe had successfully defended the television title, the Ring of Honor one. I know there's a lot of titles here. Uh, Mark Briscoe came out and said, hey, this is my destiny. So looks like we're getting that at some point, which is pretty damn cool, if you ask me. Uh, and this came after, yeah, Joe had beaten Tony Deppin. Um, so there's some other stuff here as well. This is a really interesting set of tapings. I'm kind of looking forward to this TV. Uh, Timothy Thatcher actually challenged Ring of uh, Honor pure champion Wheeler Utah as well. He was defeated. Uh, and afterwards, we got Clark Connors of New Japan coming out and challenging Utah to a future match. So lots of interesting stuff there. Full list of spoilers on our website. There's another set of tapings today, Sunday. So expect more to emerge. Maybe we'll talk about them on the news tomorrow, uh, unless there are other bigger stories that people are more interested in. But follow that out of the way. 
Let's head over to the Twitter questions for the day. I put the thread out this morning and I've got some good ones here. Uh, the first one comes from uh, Trivium124, who I'm choosing to believe is Matt Heafy himself, uh, who asks, Morning Legend, uh, who do you think is going to be the next AEW World Tag Team Champions? I feel like the guns are just holding it warm for the House of Black um, or the returning FTR. The seeds are definitely there for FTR. I think it's going to be FTR too. Um, if you've seen Twitter today, Dax has been uh, he's been a cheeky scamp over the weekend. Let's put it that way, talking about what words were and weren't acknowledged by AEW. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, yeah, and they've got that built-in rivalry with the Guns. That was, of course, the recent match for FTR before they were written off TV. They lost to the Guns, who are holding on to the belt. So yeah, I think the stars have aligned quite nicely for that. Uh, I'd like to see FTR back on AEW TV. I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to see them anywhere. They're great. They could sign anywhere and have great matches, and I'd be quite happy. Um, but if they come back into AEW, the story's right there. I think that's the way to go. I think the House of Black are going to beat the Elite, actually, for the trio's titles. So there's a two for one for you there. Uh, Travis, AEW1 uh, legend, chimes in, saying, if you could pick only one woman from stardom and place them in AEW right now, who would you pick? Um, so... I'll caveat this one by saying that I wouldn't want to take anyone away from stardom. I'd want them to still keep there because that promotion rules ass and all the wrestlers are great. That being said, Julia would be really awesome in AEW. Not only is she one of the best pure wrestlers in the world, but she's got the personality, she's got the charisma. Uh, she just leaps off of the screen every single time she's there in a similar way to like a Jamie Hayter, uh, but perhaps even more so. She's just got this presence and this aura about her. And now she's the top champion there as well. She has that additional jolt of star power. I think of all the wrestlers in stardom, there's a bunch who would connect really well in America. People like Mayu Iwatani and Izumi and Natsupoi and, and Starlight Kid but Julia's the one who stands out the most. I hope she gets a big match on Forbidden Door 2 in the US. I hope it's with Hater actually, because that would be really sick. But Julia rules, uh, and I'm glad she's at the top of the pile at the moment. And our final question here comes from Edwin Mania, um, who asks, Mania 21 was in Los Angeles, where Eddie and Ray opened. Mania 39 finally returns to LA. Do you think that Dominic and Ray will open the show, have sequences similar to the WrestleMania 20 match, 21 match and will Dom come out in a lowrider? Um, this is just one of those nice kind of poetic wrestling things that's fallen into place beautifully, isn't it? Um, calling back, of course, to, to, to Eddie and Ray. You, you have Ray still going hard in the company. You have him facing off against his, his just deadbeat son, as I'm choosing to call him now. I think it works out perfectly. Uh, a couple of callback spots would be really nice. I think Dom's going to go over, and I think Dom arriving in the lowrider with just a big cheesy tin grin on his face would be the best thing ever. Um, it'd be just a great piece of mocking heel tomfoolery, the likes of which this guy is specialised in since he joined the Judgment Day and turned his back on his dad and lost his shoe when he kicked him in the balls at Clash at the Castle. Um, yeah, I think this would be great stuff across the board. Uh, Ray will obviously will want to honour Eddie. Dom's the heel in this situation, he's gonna be an asshole. They've been doing that already with the I'm your mommy and all of that stuff. You know the drill, the mullet, everything. Um, I think that'd be quite beautiful, quite poetic, and Dom should go over 100%, roll out in his low rider with just the worst grin on his face you've ever seen. What do you think? Yeah, I, I spoke to a toy eel. Again, um, I think <laughs> with that in mind, it's probably a good time to shut this thing down, get the hell out of here. And thank you for your time joining me today, stepping in for the great Andrew Pollard. Uh, shout out to that great man as well. Tweet him, at Cultured Left Peg. I don't know, send him a picture of, of, of an eel. He'll enjoy that. Um, you can follow all of us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, the usual drill. After all that, you can follow me on Twitter at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for, hey, what the hell am I still doing here? It's a flipping Sunday. I'm going home. See you later.